Um, I'm going to talk for a few minutes about lithium in a particular sort of way. I'm not really going to talk about the company uh, and its evolution. But, you know, Ashish asked me to talk about ecosystems around businesses. And it's kind of an interesting problem when you try to do something like run electric vehicles based solutions because for the moment at least the ecosystem doesn't really exist. So it's not really about strengthening the ecosystem like in many businesses. It's actually about saying creating that ecosystem while you're also trying to create the business. So I sort of call this the ecosystem of an emerging business, the business of an ecos emerging ecosystem. And they both need to happen simultaneously for something like this to succeed. I started Lithium along with Sanjay Krishnan. Sanjay is the CEO, he runs the company on a day-to-day -day basis. So at some level I have the freedom to go and build the ecosystem around the company while he focuses on running the company. And one thing I would sort of say in response to some of the questions that came up when Mukesh was speaking, is I think it's important in companies to have people whose primary role is to build ecosystems around the company, to be outside and to say, bring in sort of the elements that are not available from the day-to-day -day strengths of the organization and build value, build opportunities around that. And uh, about a year or a year and a quarter after we started the company, Chetan Maini joined us. Some of you know Chetan as the guy who built the Mahindra Reva car and subsequently, I mean, he built it as Reva and then subsequently was acquired by Mahindra. Chetan was interested in mobility as a service and when we began talking, initially, of course, we bought cars from him and at some point when he became convinced that the whole world of mobility is moving from product to product process, well, he said, this is something I want to be in, and he came over to be part of uh, the lithium team as well. We all, we, we hear this all the time, mobility will be transformed in 30 years. We have a power minister who says, in 12 years we want a country in which every vehicle is running on electric cars. Uh, so the story that we are transforming from a fossil fuel based uh, mobility sector to a clean fuel based mobility sector, this story is well established. It's not just at the levels of the Elon Musks of the world. There are countries that are making policy decisions to drive these sorts of things today. So everybody now believes that this is going to happen. And the major trends are identifiable. It will be driven by clean fuel, there will be a shared economy, that is people will think less about owning vehicles and more about using them, and they'll all be connected. Information technology, mobile apps, web applications, these things, kiosks, and all sorts of things will power your ability to choose what you need as a mobility option. The question really is, how much of this is doable today? It's very clear that in 30 years, if the whole world is based on this, at that time, all of this will also be viable commercially, because you can't have a global ecosystem that's not viable. Uh, so you're going to go from one kind of viability based on fossil fuels and personally owned vehicles to a completely different ecosystem. Both of these are independently viable. What is that transition going to look like? That's the question, right? And one part of the answer that we sort of came up with is to say, it's not a linear transition. What you are going to find is that there are segments that are viable sooner than other segments and that allows you to keep building the market on top of viable segments rather than expecting overall viability to change over a period of time. I'm not a great believer in the theory that volume can build profitability, that if you have, if you have a unit economics problem, volume can only do, volume can help you build Air India if you have a unit economics problem. I don't see how, you know, yeah, many of you know this of course, for Air India it's actually cheaper not to fly than to fly. Um, so you don't want to get into a situation where your unit economics are so bad that you actually shouldn't be in business. Uh, so essentially our idea is because we asked this question, we sort of positioned the company this way. It's tomorrow's transportation today. The things that we believe can be done tomorrow, what portion of that can be done today? And putting it this way it doesn't really stop you from thinking about anything. It could be tomorrow's transportation to Mars, if you like, uh, or tomorrow's transportation to your workplace, if you like. Essentially, to say there is a way in which mobility itself will change, and how much of that can you accelerate into today? When we started, we started with the E2O. It's a small car. It's, besides being a small car, it's the only car available in India, which makes it doubly difficult. It was expensive relative to other small cars. It's capital expensive. 
has a limited range, uh, a little less than 100 kilometers. Uh, light use, that is, so I remember going to Chetan one day and saying, oh, how much do they use it? And he said, oh, typical vehicle, maybe, I don't know, 60 kilometers, 80 kilometers a week. And uh, we said, you know, we want to run it 250 kilometers a day. He said, well, nobody's ever done that. I mean, it's not meant to be a commercial vehicle. And so you get into this exploration of, can it be run like a commercial vehicle? Never mind what it's meant to be. Can it run like a commercial vehicle? That's the, really qu that's the question, really, right? And then you look at the modularity, you look at the battery, you look at the wear and tear, you look at the various elements of a high utility cycle that you need to maintain, and you, and you sort of work on each one of them. So it was originally intended as a light use car. Uh, the power situation in the country, and in Bangalore including, you know what the power situation is like. I think there's a flourishing business in inverters, UPS, all of those kinds of things. Um, there's no public charging infrastructure. And to, to support, uh, a lot of people think that public charging infrastructure is an important part of their buying decision. In my view, public charging infrastructure will never be successful. But uh, uh, in any event, because it affects consumers thinking about the buying decision, it is something that matters. And then there's an engineering manpower deficit. Your Maruti car, if it starts to break down for whatever reason, there are 20,000 engineers in the city, mechanics every, in, in every corner that can fix it. If your E2O breaks down, it's not really clear who you should take it to. And where's, where's that guy been trained at? Uh, Despite that, we now have hundreds of cars deployed. All of them do 220 kilometers a day per car. We've started in Delhi as well, after having originally started in uh, Bangalore. And this is the most important thing. We have a viable beachhead for the journey ahead. That is, this portion of the business has unit economics that allows you to grow. And viability is an important part of the growth story. And the reason it's an important part of the growth story is very simple. If your business is viable, you're not fighting two battles. You're not fighting investors as well as markets. If your business is not viable, you're fighting investors and markets simultaneously. And the trade-offs that you sometimes make are, are not the ones that you set out to build. And sometimes the trade-offs are selling your company or giving up you know, leadership of your company to somebody else or essentially running at a much lower, uh, much higher levels of loss. So we believe that viability is an important part. So as you build new market segments, you have to sort of say, build only those market segments that are viable. That's what propels your growth everywhere. So now I'm going to talk about this ecosystem thing. Right? What is happening? Look around. And, and I think this, has, this is something that's useful for a lot of people in a lot of different entrepreneurial situations. Markets are converging. Mobility and energy and housing and, and information technology, all of these used to be distinct marketplaces. But there's a convergence of marketplace. If the energy that powers your house can also power your car, there's a convergence between them that is possible that was not previously possible. If that energy can be sourced over the wire, uh, it's some, some other things are possible that were not previously possible. It is this convergence that is driving uh, marketplaces. What does this mean? Enterprises that build ecosystems that harness different pieces of this convergence can thrive. If you figure out how to source a little bit from the power sector, a little bit from the mobility sector, a little bit from the data and analytics sector, and build products that depend critically on that convergence, you can do things that were not previously doable. And that's the opportunity. That's why the ecosystem matters. An ecosystem-based product is typically new by, very, by the very fact of being an ecosystem-based product. Right? It has to be constructed out of bits, what used to exist previously as bits and pieces. But even within that, you have to say, okay, look, I can't, you know, I can't go around looking for things all over the planet to say where to source from. I have to have some guiding principles for which, which parts of a large ecosystem I will try to bring together into something that is you know, ready to be done today. And so we have five themes at Lithium. Other people might have other themes that make sense for them. We, 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 think, we do things that promote shared mobility, and I think that's important because shared mobility is a long-term trend, and therefore it gives you the legs needed to continue down that road. We do things that depend critically on connectedness. Whether it is for mobility itself or for anything else, 
it does need to depend on connectedness because connectedness is a long-term trend as well. We do things that are modular. Modularity is important because modularity gives you a kind of flexibility. You, let's say you have a car and your car is capable of going uh, a certain distance on a full tank. And let's say you only, on a typical day, you want to go only 10% of that distance. Your, you know, your workplace is near your house, you only want to go 10% of your distance. Um, you wouldn't normally think about saying, I really don't need such a big fuel tank, I don't need such a power, you know, can I replace that with something that is smaller and create some savings on that? You wouldn't do that if it was a petrol or a diesel car, but in a battery-powered vehicle, you can say, I need a vehicle to run 100 kilometers, and I need another vehicle to run 12 kilometers a day, 15 kilometers a day. Now, both of them are running on batteries. And because battery prices are so exponential with battery capacity, a 10-kilometer battery pack is not one-tenth of the price of a 100-kilometer battery pack. 10-kilometer battery pack will be 1% of the, the, the price of a 100-kilometer battery pack. So because of that scale thing, modularity matters. You should be able to mix and match vehicle formats. We want to do things that are responsible. Right? You don't want to do the fossil thing. You don't want to do uh, you know, culturally destructive things. You don't want to do labor destructive things. Uh, you want to do things. You know, so it's not just about ecological sensitivity. People look at an electric car and say, oh, this is good for the planet. Yeah, but being, being, treating people fairly is also good for the planet. And there's a much, you know, 20 other things that a company can do that are good for the planet even before you get to, whether it's just good in a limited environmental sense. And most importantly, it has to be competitive. So you look at the ecosystem around you and say, look, this is the, these are the themes. Based on these themes, I'm going to pick from the ecosystem. And what are the, and so with five themes, we have five themes, four market segments, uh, four, four thrusts. And what are those four thrusts? The first is market segments. We are in employee transportation, right? We pick people up at home, we take them to their offices. This is the, this is the market segment in which lithium got started. But there are so many other market segments. There is employee, in fact, I would say we are in the market segment of employee transportation with cars. Then you can sort of further segment it to say employee transportation with buses, intercity cargo, intracity, what are, intercity and intracity, airport shuttles, school buses, curbside taxis, there's all sorts of things that you can do. So different market segments is one place to go looking for a larger ecosystem. Different vehicle types is another place to go looking for a larger ecosystem. We're doing cars, we can do buses, vans, two-wheelers, light haul trucks, schools, drones, autonomous vehicles, all kinds of things, anything, maybe even those scooter type things that you drive your stand on and drive yourself. Any market segment that is based on physical form fact, any form factor can be explored, therefore vehicle typology itself is part of the ecosystem. Then power and energy infrastructure is part of the ecosystem. Where do you get your power from? What's the cost of power? Is it uh, you know, on-site or is it off-site? Is, is it fast charging or is it slow charging? Is it charging or is it swapping? Is it uh, wind-based or Heidel-based and all of that? So each of these is now contributing to the ecosystem for mobility because it is now powering mobility in ways that were not there previously. And finally, data and analytics, traffic. Traffic is one thing. I mean, the, the, the things I've marked in red everywhere will be the things that we are doing already. We generate traffic feeds out of our own fleet. Can you now go on building more and more traffic data out of your own fleet, or traffic planning data, or logistics planning data out of your own thing? Housing and energy consumption, the consumer economy, many of these things can actually be understood from mobility. And how do you build all of those things? Into, and how do you look in each of these places to build a larger ecosystem? So the ideal things that you want to try out should have like all four of these. Remember, the, the ideal pilot should be in a new market segment using a new vehicle type, using some innovation in power and energy, and have a new data and informatics application. If you can find a pilot that has all of these things, then it's really great because you're harnessing every part of the ecosystem in a nice way and your competitive advantages will be very great as a result of that. But typically in a pilot, you can't get all of them. You say, okay, I'll settle for one, I settle for two, I settle for three. But you'd never do a pilot that doesn't have at least one of them. And to be, you know, to be safe, to be smart, you would do a pilot that has at least two of them. 
If you do a pilot that has at least, a lot of people say, look, oh, electric, that's nice, that's new. But if electric was the only thing nice and new about it, you'll be caught by the commodification in three years. So you have to do something that is beyond electric, and you have to sort of pick what that thing is. Uh, so let's look at what are the sorts of things that are possible. I'm just going to run through a bunch of them, and I'm happy to leave this uh, slide deck here, share it by email, whatever. Uh, we're looking at freight within cities, in which there's a bunch of things you can look at. What do you do with three-wheelers and four-wheelers? Can you build a private charging network? Refrigeration. Refrigeration, I think, is a great uh, thing to add to an electric fleet, because it's like it gives you that second competitive direction that you want to, what people to recognize. Uh, charging infrastructure. Do you build your own charging infrastructure, or do you make it fee-based, public-use infrastructure? Uh, can, you, can you take a battery and charge it really fast if you had six slow charging things going into that battery rather than one slow charging node going into that battery? Is fast, fast charging simply a matter of the velocity of the electron or is it actually a matter of you know, scale and form factor and how many connectors you have? Last mile connectors, right? You can pick up market segments, hyperloops, how do you build community-based services? Apartments are coming in clusters, villas are coming in clusters. Can you build services using these as anchor points in a mobility network? Modular manufacturing, can you, can you say that instead of large plants in which cars are made, 100,000 cars, 600,000 cars are made each year, you will have small assembly plants in which 200 cars per year can be assembled in Dharmapuri, in Shimoga, in whatever, you know, Jabalpur, and so on and so forth. Why does the manufacturing facility have to be large and located in any place? Why is it such a land-intensive process? Can you have modular manufacturing that can be done in a three-acre plot? The, the, e, the E2O Plus, incidentally, if you've never been to the Mahindra factory, the E2O is made in a small thing. It's actually like a nice, clever Lego factory. Uh, it's, it's a little more complicated than Lego, I realize. But uh, even at that, it's the kind of thing that's really fascinating to take your child to and say, this is how a car is put together. And it's not large. I've been to the Nissan factory. I've been to the um, Reva factory. And these are very different types of manufacturing. Service-appropriate vehicles. Can you figure out how you can take a two-seater car that you plan to use, a four-seater car that you plan to use for a commute and say, because it's a commuter car, I don't need the boot. But when I need the boot, I should be able to create the boot in that thing. Can you create service appropriate? Can, like Dell makes computers based on your need and your demand, can you make cars based on your need and your demand? Configurable seating. Higher range batteries, can you co-locate with higher uh, highway facilities? Can you put this at coffee days on a highway so that range is extended? While you're having coffee, can I charge your car? In three years, your car will, through a fast charging port, in three years, your car will charge in six minutes. That's where the technology is going. And the car that can do X kilometers today, in three years, will do three X of that distance. So it will charge 10 times faster and do three times the distance that it is able to do. That's how rapidly the technology is changing. Can we look at self-drive as an option? Can we look at multiple vehicle types? and multiple charging technologies out of the same ports, for example. Today the problem is each vehicle has its own port, its own technological basis for charging. How many of those can you put in public space even? So can you create a uniform charging infrastructure in which multiple typologies of charging can be built? Can we do airports? Can you bundle your service along with air tickets? Can you create hotel shuttles? Can you create airport itself as a charging hub? All sorts of things can be done with large transit facilities as hubs. Service center. When you, do, you run all these vehicles, they break down a lot, they get into accidents a lot, things happen to them, right? This is the reality. So you've got to be able to have a service network that does that. Who's going to build that service network? Can you, co can you build it along with the OEM so that the vehicle manufacturer and you are actually building a service network together? Who's going to certify learning in all of that stuff? Who's going, to try, sir, who's going to train your drivers, for example? We signed up with an Austrian company for defensive driving technology. The electric car is very powerful. If you step on it, it'll just go. I don't know, out of the signal, your electric car can go faster than your BMW. Uh, so that's because the conversion of potential to kinetic energy is much faster in an electric vehicle than in a fossil fueled vehicle. So how do you build the swapping, charging, certification, service environment? Can you build custom transport for certain groups of people or services that are not otherwise available? And why are all of these pieces of the ecosystem different? Because these are pieces of the ecosystem that can strengthen your product. But these are also pieces of an ecosystem into which you can create new products. 
which don't exist today. In each part of the ecosystem, so always think of the ecosystem as doing something that essentially product A used to exist, product B used to exist, A plus B is a product that did not used to exist. So that's why the ecosystem matters. It could be that A plus B strengthens A, which you started to do, and that's one reason to do. But A plus B can also create a product that did not exist at all, and that's another reason to tap into the ecosystem. Can we do tarmac services, item tracking? So you now people always get off the plane and they wonder where the hell their, their baggage is. Is it coming, you know, the guy is standing at the beginning of the conveyor belt looking through that and saying, where is that? Now, can you do itemized tracking? Can we do homeland security? There's all sorts of things you can get into once you start looking in the ecosystem. Drones is another area. Can we create private mailboxes? Can we create private landing ports for small drones? Can, you know, drop boxes for your courier services in uh, apartment communities can actually be managed by these technologies much better. And autonomous vehicles, campus shuttles, tarmac, there are all kinds of places with uh, autonomous vehicles. Autonomous almost certainly will be based on electric, and therefore the electric starting point gives you a natural segue into autonomous vehicles. Second life, what happens after you've used the car? What can you do with batteries? What can you do? Can you put it a lighter use than what you, if you were running the car 250 kilometers a day for three years, at the end of that cycle, can you say, okay, I'm going to now run it for 60 kilometers a day? And because I, it's, it's all paid for, the car is paid for, all your costs are paid for, can you create extended life for it? Or can you take the battery home and use it as an inverter? Uh, because it's very powerful. This is a battery that is powerful enough not just to fire up your fridge. It's not just that it can power your fridge. It's capable of driving your fridge at 80 kilometers an hour. So, you know, so what can you do with technology like that if you put it to a second life use like that? So the whole idea is this. You imagine, then you create. And because it doesn't exist, your imagination has to be in multiple directions in ways that say, where is the distinction opportunity? Where is the opportunity for creative learning? Where is the opportunity for simply doing things that were never done before? And where is the opportunity for doing things that are important? I would say if, if there are two things that are critical about what lithium does, it's not electric vehicles. I think what is, what, what I like about what lithium does is that I think it's important. It's important to create an economy in which so much fossil fuel is not burnt in mobility. It's important to create a responsible way of living in this planet for our generation. And so for me, that's one part that's ex exciting. But another part that's exciting is that you're, in theory, you're running a transportation services company. In practice, you're enabling the creation of a large ecosystem in which you're learning as you create and you're creating as you learn. And that opportunity is fantastic for a lot of different people. We get all sorts of people coming to us and saying, can we work with you in this? A lot of people are motivated by electri electrics and by electrical engineering technologies and mobility around that. But of late, a lot more people are motivated by what we can do in energy, what we can do in data and analytics, and what we can do in power sector, infrastructure, and all sorts of other things. I think it's an interesting time. The big lesson for me is really that companies need to be more deliberate in how they source the ecosystem into their business. And equally, you have to be good at giving from your business into that ecosystem. If your business is not giving to the ecosystem, you have no right to source from it. If your business gets really good at giving into that ecosystem, naturally you will find people who want to give to you from that ecosystem as well. I'll stop here and thank you. Thank you.